is in the making. Get exclusive offers on the Hardy's app. This mixed TV interview is supplied by Wholesale Supply Group. Visit us online at wholesalesupply.us. Key Street, Cleveland, Tennessee. All right, uh, welcome in, everyone. And uh, we are uh, just uh, very happy to have uh, our uh, leaders on a uh, brand new initiative uh, that we've been uh, bringing you this morning uh, for the first time as our two school districts have joined forces with ATS The Bridge to combat the vaping epidemic among students. And we are joined by our longtime friends, first of all, the chairman of the Cleveland Board of Education, Nate Tucker, Dr. Linda Cash, who, we, of course, you know is the Bradley County School Director, Assistant Director in the uh, Cleveland City School System, Dr. Jeff Elliott. And then we have, from ATS The Bridge, Jared Waldrop and friend. Wait, <laughs> Zandra Welsh is here. She's already taking selfies. All right, I want to begin, Nate, with you because, uh, first of all, uh, this is a, a big deal with both, uh, if you guys will come up a little closer, uh, uh, b both systems joining together to combat vaping, and you call it, or this news release calls it, an epidemic. Is it an epidemic? What do you think, Steve? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, I think, uh, for me, this is a personal thing. Uh, I grew up in the uh, sc public school system in Washington, D.C., and I grew up in a moment where uh, crack cocaine was on the rise. And so uh, seeing the effects of my friends, losing friends to drugs, to selling drugs, and then coming here, my goal is to make sure that, that the kids here in Cleveland and Bradley County don't ex have that same experience. And so this is more personal for me. So. Thank you, Nate. Dr. Linda Cash, uh, I know uh, you have been a champion of not only this initiative, but ATS The Bridge and working closely with them for several years. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what do you want people to know about well, this? Well, what we want, want people to know is that it, we are targeting vaping, but it's more than that. It, it's the health of our children. It is an epidemic because it's out there that it's an, a safe alternative to cigarettes. And But what's in these vapes and what happens when they vape, we are seeing mo the majority of our disciplinary hearings are related to the THC, which is the marijuana that's in those vapes. So the kids don't understand and know the health risk that they're having and taking upon themselves and the reactions that they have but it's not just the vapes it's all the other things that are targeted and I'm working uh, closely with some of our um, senators and representatives about uh, you know the the advertising and target again targeting students and targeting young adults that are making them think there's nothing wrong with this and so our goal is to get the truth out there about what it actually does to them and their bodies and the addiction it is so quickly addicted to them and they and they we've got programs in place but we are seeing an uptick in the use across the way and I, I think Jeff would agree that that's what we're seeing is kids once they start that addiction takes hold and and our goal is make everybody aware, make our parents aware, parents who are buying it for their children thinking, well, at least they're doing this now in front of me when not realizing that they're harming their students with this. Uh, Dr. Uh, Jeff Elliott, uh, if you will, uh, talk, talk about the uh, Cleveland City Schools uh, portion of this. Sure. Uh, again, we have partnered with ATS Bridge for a while now, and we really appreciate uh, Zandra and Jared and, and their team coming into our schools and presenting to our students to share and, and educate our students, but uh, we want to take it the next step, and that's what we're here today about, is bringing our community on board and, and sharing uh, the importance of just communicating with our families about the truth of, and reality of what's going on here in our, uh, with our students at this age, up until 18 and beyond as they're moving into their adult years. But we're, we have a heart, uh, obviously, for our young kids and our children. And I have my own uh, daughter who's a seventh grader at Cleveland Middle School, and we're having these uh, uh, reality of conversations right now. And so we want to continue this partnership. We're looking forward to it. As a community, I know in Bradley County and Cleveland City, we come and rally together for important reasons, and, and now's the time to rally uh, for this reason as well. All right, I want to bring on uh, Jared and Zandra, and uh, full disclosure, come on up, guys. I am a, uh, and you can move that mic around, Zandra. I am a... Uh, yeah, there you go. Just, just do whatever you want. I'm a uh, Jared. You want to come to the other one? I am a proud uh, board member 
of uh, ATS The Bridge, and as Xander would say, when I show up. Is that Amen. Is that right? <laughs> uh, it was seven years ago that, uh, that uh, Steve Wright uh, started ATS The Bridge, and it was a meeting held at uh, Pango Hall, the former First Baptist Cleveland, where we began to talk about opioids and drugs in schools. And then all of a sudden the awareness really rose. And now that's still a, a focus of ATS, Jared, but vaping has become, a, as this news release says this morning, an epidemic. What do parents not know? You're in schools all the time. You're talking. You're meeting with the students, the faculties, the staffs all over the place, not just here, but also now in McMinn County. What do parents not know? I think parents don't know just how big a problem it really is. You know, when you have, according to the American Lung Association, 6,100 kids every day under the age of 18 vaping for the very first time, you know, it's 2 million a year, roughly. Um, it's a problem. Um, they don't know necessarily the health risks that come along with it, uh, the amount of nicotine that um, are inside uh, these vape canisters, the, uh, the danger health-wise. Everybody assumes this is just a, a smoking alternative, um, but it is, it's dangerous chemicals that lead uh, to health problems, not to mention setting a young life up for a battle with fierce addiction. Um, I think parents um, don't know just how many kids, uh, you know, and you can look at the numbers when it comes to anxiety and depression and a lot of these mental health stresses that are on these kids, um, what they're dealing with and what they're struggling with every single day that have led to um, trying to cope uh, with these means. And it's dangerous. It's unhealthy. Xander, you're in the middle uh, of this fight on a daily basis. What, what would you tell the people this morning? Um, you know, I think the one thing that I noticed personally, this is very personal for me, and most everybody knows that, but um, the thing that I would tell and encourage parents that, that really bothered me and something that I noticed up close and personal four years ago is that you mess around with this and before you know it, addiction sets in, and you can't play and vape every now and then and not expect to see the addiction start because vaping is the fast path to addiction and it is the nicotine these kids can consume and now not only that but we can't ignore the fact that a lot of times in juvenile court we are seeing these kids that are showing up because they're vaping THC and that is a whole other issue that these uh, and men, these educators deal with on a daily basis and it's very real it's very real what it's doing to our kids and we've got to do something to stop it it's easily accessible we got to figure that out and marketing toward our students that's just not okay and it is so good to see us all come together and realize this is for the betterment of our students it's not about just doing a campaign because we have an issue but it is an epidemic and when we lined up a football field from end zone to end zone with 85 pounds of confiscated vapes, those are just the ones that were confiscated, that's a big deal. That was 700 plus vapes in less than a year's time and that just wasn't, that wasn't all of them. So yes, we have a problem and Jared, tell them the statistic about why why another reason why this is so important about we know now we have enough data about if you start vaping before the age of or using marijuana so the reason why this is such a huge issue we know we have a drug problem in america but we we won't touch the drug problem as a whole if we don't talk about vaping with our kids so when you have 6100 a day vaping for the very first time. Some of that's going to be nicotine. A high percentage of that is going to be THC as well. Um, but studies have shown that if teenagers consume THC before the age of 18, the likelihood that they will abuse opioids later in life skyrockets. So as a whole, when we're talking about opioids, when we're talking about fentanyl, when we're talking about other big drug problems, it, it starts here. It starts with the vaping issue. And so we have to solve this. We have to address this. We have to educate 
kids, families. We have to get the entire community involved, schools, coaches, governmental leaders, everybody, if we're going to make a dent in the crisis um, that drugs are creating in our country. We're joined this morning. Uh, we have a very special interview right now uh, between our, uh, again, the two school districts have joined forces locally with ATS The Bridge to combat the vaping epidemic amongst students. We're joined again by Dr. Jeff Elliott. He's the uh, assistant, uh, am I saying that right? Assistant Director of Cleveland, yes. something like that. Cleveland City. <laughs> well, well, you'll, you'll correct me later. It's fine. Uh, Dr. Linda Cash, Director of Bodley County Schools. Nate Tucker is the Cleveland Board of Education Chairman. Uh, they meet tonight, as a matter of fact, a very consequential meeting tonight, as a matter of fact. And ATS The Bridge, uh, Jared Waldrop, Zandra Wells. Jared, I want to go back to you and Zandra for just a second here. Um, in our meetings, uh, you guys have actually brought ways in which vapes are disguised. Yes. And I want parents to hear this this morning, and I want grandparents to hear this this morning. Xander, I want to start with you. Uh, it ain't, it, look, you know, I'm not very bright, and you know that. No, no, but, yeah. but look, Thanks it doesn't it. say vape in capital letters on it, does it? How, how, how are these disguised sometimes? Well, sometimes they're disguised as highlighters. Sometimes they are things that look just like what they would plug in, like a um, what a USB? Mm -hmm. USB. Yeah, that plugs into your computer. Took place right in front of me, and I had no clue. Keychains. Keychains. Key yeah. yeah, come on up. What now, are you saying? Yeah. Now we're seeing it looks like a keychain, like a, a fob. So they they are everyday items now. They are turning into vapes. So it could be a fob for like a key fob, a highlighter. Uh, a perfume bottle. I mean, it's it, it is definitely a marketing um, strategy to not only entice the students but to hide it from their parents. So, mm -hmm. I, I think we've got a long road ahead of us to educate. But I think it's important that we do educate, and we will start with uh, you know our PTO presidents and and start educating them. And ATS the Bridge will come in and show them all of the crazy things that are out there that are disguised so that they can begin to spread that word. You mentioned PTO. There's going to be a, a kickoff event uh, at the Pine Center February 13th from 9 a.m. until 11 a.m. We're going to be carrying that on MixTV.TV Live. Zandra, uh, uh, back to you for a second because, uh, like you said, that's disguised every, other, every, every which way. It is, and one of the things that we've learned through a program that we have if you are caught with a vape, um, a nicotine vape in our school systems, both school systems. We joined forces um, about two years ago trying to come up with a way to do education before citation and we developed a program with law enforcement, our juvenile courts, our DA was involved, directors of schools of course, and SROs to how can we educate these kids. So we do that program on Saturdays and if they're caught, and they have three chances before they end up in juvenile court. Because we do try to educate first. And if it's a, if it's a THC vape, that's totally different because there, there's a zero tolerance in both of the school systems. Um, but one of the things that we learned through this, these kids talking to us and telling us, is they wish they had known about these things earlier, that we should have been telling them about this. And, you know, it's not been out there very, very long. But that is what we're doing now. That's another program that we've initiated in the schools with the blessings of the school systems. Uh, they let us do a pilot program, so we now have a program for the K through second and third grade that we are introducing and talking about drugs in a gentle way and also introducing vapes, just so they know that this is not good for you either. Uh, it'll be a, uh, uh, again, uh, ATS Abridge and our school system leaders join us this morning uh, live here on uh, Mix 1041 and MixTV.TV. This is the kickoff of what will be a major initiative. Also, as part of the news release and a focus campaign, quoting, in a focus campaign, the collaboration will address the dangers of vaping, employing various strategies, public service announcements, targeted social media campaign, and hosting community events. This multifaceted approach aims to reach children and adolescents through channels they engage with Jared regularly. Is that the goal uh, of the, uh, the, the campaign? Yeah, you know, uh, the goal is engagement, engagement with kids, engagement with families, educators, everybody on board, everybody learning, everybody 
becoming aware um, and really saturating this community with uh, the right information on what the dangers really are. Zandra? Yes, and one thing that is so good that we have in our schools is we have ambassadors in our schools that are helping us take a stand. They are standing up amongst their peers, and I'm fixing to go to a photo shoot for some at one of the schools, and it's a club inside the schools where we have 80 students in one school that are taking a stand and it's growing daily between all of our high schools and in our middle schools and you know that's one thing that we're trying to do is empower them empower them to stand up take a stand among their peers be the leaders and be the leaders by you know saying no and reminding them educating them we educate these ambassadors they know how to talk to their friends about not choosing this to cope not starting vaping and it's, it's just it's such a good thing and it's growing and growing and Dr. Cash is the first one to allow me to allow <laughs> us to start doing that we took it to Cleveland City Schools and she takes a chance uh, on our crazy ideas sometimes but she goes with sometimes it. Sometimes I go well. And to, I say, <laughs> to say you're going to a photo shoot would be any day that ends in Y. I think you uh, have a photo yes. shoot about every day. <laughs> hey. uh, I want to get one more comment from each of you. Jared I want to begin with you. What, anything you want to leave us with here? Well, one, parents that are listening out there, talk to your kids. Talk to your kids. Have an open, honest discussion about um, this issue. Um, because here's the thing. There's so many adults out there that are using. Uh, they got to make their choices. They got to live with those consequences. Uh, kids should not. And I'm so proud of these ambassadors in these schools that are stepping up because when it comes down to it, we can pass laws, and that's good. That's going to help. Uh, we can have drug busts, that's good, that's going to help, but what's going to make the most impact is a generation that's younger that sees that there is a problem and chooses different. Mm -hmm. And really when it comes down to it, that's, that's the impact right there, is uh, a, a generation of, of kids that are willing to stand up and say, I'm, I'm tired of my friends getting addicted, I'm tired of going to uh, funerals, I'm tired of seeing all this wreaking havoc on on my generation let's do something different Nate Tucker is the chairman of the Cleveland Board of Education Nate a final comment yes uh, as a parent that has two kids in the system um, I want to also uh, address the parents and I want to uh, ask the parents to uh, educate yourselves get involved with this campaign don't ignore it because the information the numbers speaks for themselves and the only way you're going to be able to deal with it is to be educated yourself and so get involved with this campaign thank you dr uh, linda cash uh, final comment I i'm really just asking the parents in the community to stand up with us stand up with us and let's have a loud voice to protect our students and protect our kids not just the ones who are doing it now but prevent those who are starting so if we stand up together we can make a difference and uh, dr jeff elliott Yes, I agree with every, what everybody already has said, and I also say Cleveland City Schools, we're committed to doing whatever we can to look out for the safety of our, our students, and through this education process with our families, we're going to continue to do that. We invite every, all our PTO leads to come out on February 13th again at 9 a.m. over at the Pi Center, and I look forward to that uh, opportunity working with ATS The Bridge. We're going to continue to have meetings with our coaches, our staff. Uh, our counselors and our teachers do a great job, and, and we're going to continue to provide opportunities for them. Shout out to our counselors. This is National Counselor Week, and so I know they're very pivotal in, in this process as well, and I appreciate our staff for all they're doing to help us out with this partnership. And normally, Zandra schedules uh, Jared and, and ATS The Bridge in the schools through the counselors, I believe, so that's uh, they're very important. Zandra, a final comment from you. If you can keep it under an hour, that'd be nice. Uh, I will. No, uh, yes, everything that everybody has said is is very true we're all in this together this is our community these are our children and that's what we are here for is to take a stand and protect them the best way we can and education is the key right here and that's what we're out here doing so thank you all let me uh, uh parents uh, so here's what you need to do uh grandparents uh, so many of you grandparents we know you're raising children go to atsthebridge.org they have a number of resources there, atsthebridge.org. And a big thank you to Miranda Reppner. I promised, uh, anyway, she said it would be her last appearance here, but anyway, thanks for coming in. 
Caroline Corrigan. Miranda and Caroline work so hard on this along with this team. Folks, you talk about a behind-the-scenes joint effort. This has been going on really for months, uh, Zandra, and, and uh, I really, really appreciate the care that these individuals have, and there's many more than just this, uh, for your children and your grandchildren. And uh, we want to get this early. And God bless Steve Wright for starting this whole thing. All right. So that is it. Uh, but that's not it. The next event and the next big